I'm not sure what he talked about. One God, I forget, his, his latest book, okay. obviously before he passed on. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we're being, is, it, is that, was that your camera? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, well, he, he could be good for I think, one God, but I can't remember now. Okay. But he, goes, he goes into the. Like he interprets, for example, when Genesis, okay. Elohim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've probably got into the plural. Yeah, yeah, that's like that. that. Okay, so, so so what was your analysis like of why Jesus wasn't the God? Like, from well, obviously, you... our, from my perspective is that it's from the Quran, okay. primarily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, I try to. I don't. I don't say everything. I don't say I reject this verse okay. because the Quran says this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I also I try my best to present other points of view as well. Okay. That. Uh, Supposedly, do support the Quran as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. So I use a lot of the academic side of things, so source criticism. Okay. So I'll explain, like a lot of like Mark's passage. Yeah. And then I say, I'll say, okay, Matthew used Mark. Okay. But he modifies it here and there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With actual criticism. Okay. Um, textual criticism. I go into that as well. Manuscripts. Okay. And where certain passages were modified, yeah, yeah, changed, yeah. and stuff like that. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, it's helpful okay. for, for the Muslim, and for, for you to get the Muslim perspective as well. Okay. So, so then what was your kind of the outcomes of what you felt that the Christians had corrupted the scripture around this person? I wouldn't say corrupted God. the scripture. Okay. I would say, I mean, there is an element of that through later Christian scribes okay. for having the freedom to write parts of it, what they felt they wanted to write. Okay. Uh, and obviously, some like early church fathers yeah. are actually, you know, they're condemning certain scribes as well, saying, you know, you find that in the footnotes or the the columns of certain manuscripts, okay. saying, fool, hardy, you no know, scribe, leave yeah. the original reading, because yeah, yeah, yeah. they make free reading. But also about, I guess, who wrote the gospels as well, isn't yeah. it? We don't really know, have that information. Okay. Um, Mark, yeah, Mark wrote it. Who is Mark? Okay. Where did he get his information from? Okay. Uh, who is Matthew? Who is Mark? And okay. Mark and Duke and John. Who are these people? We don't have a lot of information about that. Okay. So it's difficult to verify. And the uh, concept of the Trinity. So then, what was your kind of? Well, I didn't how, go how, much into the Trinity. <laughs> I don't okay. understand the Trinity. Uh, but not not in terms of <laughs> understanding what it was. But how do you perceive, from a Muslim perspective, that this doctrine came into play? I don't know whether to blame. Okay, this is outside the commentary now. But I, for my own personal okay, view, okay. So your commentary doesn't my, do deal not, with that. Well, because the Trinity is not really spoken about in depth in the four Gospels. Okay, okay. So Paul you just, okay. goes into a little bit, but I don't know whether Paul, for me, my own personal view. Yeah. I don't think Paul created the Trinity. Okay. I personally believe Paul believed that Jesus was a an angel or as the supreme creation of God. Okay. He wasn't God. Okay. That's my own analysis of, of Paul okay. of Paul's letters. Okay. Because he talks about a hierarchy as well, a lot of places. So then why do you think Paul would have believed Jesus was a supreme being? Like what like did you extrapolate evidence from the Bible or are you just kind of saying this is what I think Paul thinks? This is what I was. This is what I think Paul thinks. Okay. I mean, obviously, you take it from his yeah, letters yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and, and his writings. Yeah, okay. he elevated him. Okay. Few things. I mean, I personally believe, yeah, Paul prob probably came to the conclusion of yeah. he saw Jesus. He knew he was dead. Yeah. Everybody told him he was dead. Yeah. And then he saw Jesus alive okay. and realized what's going on. Okay. This. This is something, something, something happened here. Okay. He must not be, um, you know, a human being. Okay. He must be beyond that. Okay. And then from so, there, his so ideas evolved. So, so, so then, so your presumption would be that so Paul saw um, that Jesus ascending, so then put. No, he didn't see him ascend. Uh, he, oh, sorry, like oh, I was aware that Jesus ascended, so therefore he would have felt well because Jesus had died. This must have made him some sort of... To a degree, I personally believe that Paul met Jesus. Okay. I personally believe that. On the road of Damascus, perhaps. So then how do you reconcile that with an Islamic perspective? I am not the Sunni Muslim. Okay. I interpret the texts. Our viewpoint is that Jesus was placed onto the cross, but he survived the cross. Okay, are you you're, are you not, are you an Ahmadiyya? Yeah, 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 I am an Ahmadiyya. Ah, okay, 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 so you believe so, he was... Okay, and but then you would have, that's like the swoon theory or correct. something like that. Okay. Because when, it, when you read Paul's letters, yeah. 
if you take act to the apostle aside okay. and read his letters, okay. Paul is convinced. You know, because I can't hear just for sure. Like really loud. Paul, if you read his letters, uh, maybe just. This is quite loud. I can't. Hear. If you take the like apostle out of the picture for, for one second yeah, yeah, yeah. and you read Paul's letters, yeah. you have to come to the conclusion that Paul met Jesus like the other apostles. Okay. He was equal to them. Okay. Exactly on the same level. Okay. And he convinced himself that he was resurrected from the dead because a vision for me a vision doesn't convince somebody that this person's resurrected. Like if I if I knew you and if I and somebody had told me you had died. Yeah, and you were dead, and that's it. And I knew that you had you had died. Okay. And after a few days or a year, I see you right now in the flesh. If I would probably believe, oh my God, either you didn't die or that you died and that you resurrected from the dead. Okay. But after a few, if after somebody told me that you were dead, yeah. And then a year later, I see you in a dream or a vision. I'm not going to come to the conclusion that you've resurrected from the dead, am I? Okay. So, so I then think what would have Jesus told Paul if he... Stop persecuting my community! Okay. <laughs> sort it out! Stop okay. it! But then wouldn't he have said to Paul... Possibly. If, he, if Paul believed he was an angel, wouldn't Jesus have clarified that... No, I think Paul evolved and stopped. Eventually. Eventually got to those thoughts okay. and, and moved they move along. I mean, for example, when you read the earlier letter of Paul, I yeah. mean, you don't find many divinic titles of Jesus, but the latter okay. ones, like Philippians, yeah. one of his last letters, the yeah. poem, the poem is the, over, over there, Philippians, I think it is, yeah, yeah. where Jesus is to a degree, lowered himself, kind of, yeah, and yeah, kind yeah. of almost equated himself to God as well, yeah, yeah, yeah. or practically has, okay. um, so he's, he's thinking things through. So then how did you become an Amadeo, because obviously that's quite a, um obscure, but n maybe not obscure, but it's quite different. a yeah, quite. It's not the obviously mainstream Islam, so it's kind of like well, maybe this, either you're born into it or I was born you, into it. Okay, okay, but then I researched okay. Christian. Because it's, it's, it's just because it's not something that I, I hear many people that would, they convert into. Not it. many, yeah, not yeah, many. So it's, to be honest, not many Muslims a, go into Paul anyway. It took yeah. me years to. I'm I'm a master Paul. I mean, I'm still looking into him. Okay. He's he's a difficult read. Yeah. I think understanding the gospel is a lot easier. Yeah. Than understanding Paul's letters. Okay. He is hard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I I'll address that in a second. But so just going back to the Amadeus part. So then how come you don't accept like Sunni Islam or let's say Shia Islam? Like, is it just have you looked into them or, or like I'm yeah. just trying to understand I mean, like the differences with, between your beliefs? Because my my own background, I'm quite. I've researched Christianity quite a bit. Okay. So, and there's one particular saying of the Prophet that stood out to me. Yeah. Where he said that my community will resemble, will be split just like the Jews. Yeah. And they will resemble the Jews like one shoe resembles the other shoe. Okay. And he goes, all of them will be in the fire except one. Okay. And uh, that, that stood out to me. I was wondering why, what, what's so different? Yeah. Are we that one? Who is that one? Okay. I looked around. But then I looked at, I looked at all the prophecies mm -hmm. in which I looked at why did the Jews reject Jesus? Yeah, yeah. And they rejected Jesus because Jesus yeah. did not literally fulfill any of their prophecies. Well, he did, but partially. But literally, not all of them. literally, he didn't. Like he wasn't literally uh, a ruler who who was a yeah. kind of David. But that's why. I say that again. He didn't literally like. He wasn't a literal usher in the kingdom of God, yeah, did he? Yeah. Or he didn't, Elijah didn't literally descend from the heavens. But then that's why they'll say there's a second coming. So that's why the I said Jews, partially. Yes, but yeah, the yeah. Jews don't have a second coming. Yeah, they yeah. have one coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in the same way, our Prophet Muhammad prophesied the coming of Jesus. Yeah. And he said the same things. Yeah. That he will be a just ruler. Okay. He will bring in, he will usher in yeah. the rule of the kingship, something like that. Okay. So the Muslims have rejected our Messiah yeah. for the exact same reason as the Jews rejected the first Messiah. Okay. And I see the parallel. Okay. And I see the ones. Who, and, I, and for me, that that kind of but, resolves the. But mind. the thing is, when you actually go into the Old Testament and you look at the prophecies. Because then just actually one other question is how do you view the, the scripture? Is it corrupted or is it reliable? So when I looked at the prophecies yeah. or the, what the viewpoints of the Jews were, yeah. I, I studied the, uh, the the Jews at the time you of Jesus. You read the whole Bible? No, no, no. I studied the Jews at the time of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. And what did they understand to be who the Messiah would be? Okay. So I read the Jewish works like the parables of Enoch, 
okay. the fourth book of Ezra, okay. the, the Psalms of Solomon, okay. uh, Dead Sea Scrolls. Okay. These are all the Jews at the time of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. And I got their ideas. What, okay. was, what were they expecting Jesus to be? Okay. What the Messiah to be? Okay. And then formulated that from there and then realized, okay, this is what the Jews accepted. Yeah. In fact, the Muslims are exactly the same. Okay. They're, they're looking for the exact same okay. stuff. But then the one thing you did miss out was the Old Testament. That's very much open to interpretation, isn't it? Like, for example, I've, I have looked at, like, for example, the suffering servant. Yeah. Um, I looked at these, but these are only, from what I get, yeah. these are only Christian interpretations. Okay. Pushing yeah. this idea that this is to do with Jesus. Okay. But I looked at it in this original context, yeah. I didn't see these relating to Jesus. Well, I, I think, but the thing is, you have, in a sense, a semi valid point because people at the time may not because that's how God protects his word yeah. is through a prophecy because people talk about the corruption of the scripture and people don't actually realize the way God preserves his word is interweaving it throughout the narrative of the Old Testament so they're reading something without realizing it's referring to something that's in the true. future I, I, I'll give you that so when I'm Jesus sure. fulfilled something it was like actually let's go back into the that, scripture that's what it was isn't it yes yeah, I get so that. therefore I can say like if you're just reading Isaiah 53 you may not necessarily understand what it meant because even when we look at the classical Jewish text around uh, the, um, the Old Testament and what some of the earliest scholars or rabbis taught about Isaiah 53 some said they said it was about the Messiah and Israel now Jews will say it's only about Israel I don't know about that the yeah. reason I don't know is because when I looked this up yeah I didn't find any early um, Jewish yeah uh, so, interpreter. Okay, so interpreting, I'll, I'll, I'll show you. Interpreting it messianically. I'll show you one of the earliest scholars. Who is it? Do you know the name? So it's called the Targum. Ta that's late. Targum. That's after Jesus. That's after Christ. Well, they actually, it wasn't, some of it wasn't physically written until much later, but then they'll say well, the, the tradition was that it goes back yeah, to if we go the time back, of, the, yeah, of the first temple. Maybe, but I mean, so, I don't know. According, I mean, I, according to Jew, Obviously, we don't have, I think, all the manuscripts, no. but according to um, Jewish belief, yeah. they will say this goes back to Jonathan Ben Uzel. But for, from from my study, yeah. that was far too late and ambiguous. Okay. I did in university. I, only, I could only go through the ones that I knew okay. were uh, like 200 years before Jesus and about okay. 100 and so years after Jesus. The Talgums and the, the Targums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was too ambiguous. For me. That was far too late. But and you're right, they became polemical, didn't they? But then, no, that's the Talmud you might be thinking. No, no, and the Targums. Okay, okay. And the, and the other yeah, ones the, Targum, the Talmud was more uh, polemical. That became the, polemical. The Targum was basically just the Aramaic translation of the Hebrew Bible. So it wasn't about adding any any outside thoughts right because obviously in the first century Jews did not speak all of them did not speak Hebrew yeah so they spoke Aramaic so basically the Targum is the Aramaic trans of the version of that yeah, yeah. yeah so because basically what I was going to show you is basically what they wrote about Isaiah 53 and they actually used the word Messiah okay so this is like according to Jewish tradition this will be one of their classical texts that goes that. back to the first century right. So, because when I when I looked at Isaiah 53, yeah, um, and I'll show you the evidence. No, there's yeah, a, but, if oh, you look at the, uh, I think it's the Hermonia series, commentary series, that's an academic series. Okay. And um, you find out that Isaiah 53 is in fact one of the sub, one of the four is a fourth suffering servant songs, isn't it? Okay. I'm not sure how many. There's four songs. Okay. There's one in chapter 40. 1, 42, 48, yeah. 53. Yeah. And you got to take all four suffering servant songs into account to find out who this figure is. Okay. And the second one explicitly says the servant is Jacob, Israel. Basically. So when you look at them all in context, that's how uh, I, well, I analyze well, it. Well, we'll look at that verse because that's not <laughs> okay. what I'm familiar with. Go on, no problem. I'll, I'll, we'll start with Isaiah 53. Um, so. What does the... Yeah, so this is from the Targum, so Isaiah 53. So therefore it goes on and it says their Messiah. Can I read that paragraph? Yeah, and it was the pleasure of the Lord to refine and to purify the remnant of his people 
in order to cleanse their souls from sin, that they might see the kingdom of their Messiah, that their sons and daughters might multiply and prolong their days, and those that kept the law of the Lord shall prosper through his pre okay. pleasure. I'll have to so look it up. I'll have this to look is obviously up. a paraphrasing, yeah. so it's not a direct translation. No. I'll have to look but this up. is why, like, if you say this is not about the Messiah, we can actually go into what they hold as one of their classical texts. And what, texts. what is that exactly? I can, so I can look this it up This is Targum, Jerusalem. Targum? Yeah, Jerusalem. Targum, Jerusalem. Uh, yeah. I just want to make, make a note of it. Because yeah, I, I can't say anything about something that I don't, yeah, I don't no, know Yeah, no, that's about. fine. Research into it. And Isaiah 9 as well, about the virgin. Um, they shall call me... Which one is that? I, I think Isaiah Emmanuel? 9. Yeah, that verse, they mentioned the Messiah as well. He's the same person. It's one of their classical texts. So we actually see what, what, in what they consider their classical text, references to the Messiah. So it just depends on what... Yeah, I remember the, I remember the, the, the Targum, but I'm looking to yeah. it. But then because... I kind of because I, Jews I, now will say it's not a reference to the Messiah, but when we go to their classical sources, the classical sources go against what they tell you. Maybe it's they're not aware, but we can go into what they consider as classical and see that actually, hold on, there were very early beliefs that this person was the Messiah, which they now changed to Israel. Right. I have to look it up because for me, I, I kind of I turn my I turn I turn the blind eye to the Targums because yeah. they were. They would, I, I can see them too late. Well, they're know. orally preserved. Orally, That's what yeah. They'll say. So, yeah. But then we know, for example, like when you look at the Aleppo Codex, which was the, from the Masoretic, and we didn't have the, um, what do you call it? The, we had the Dead Sea Scrolls. Yeah. So then we know that the preservation was pretty accurate between the two. Oh, yeah, so it's that, certain, certain poetic that books. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oral poetic tradition books. was pretty, like, quite accurate. There was very few differences between the two. Only the, only the, only the, only the scroll of Isaiah, though, not the other ones. So there's the, the Dead Sea Scrolls have a Genesis Apocrypha, a completely alternative version of the Genesis story as well. So there's a lot of other Jewish books in the Dead Sea Scrolls yeah. that don't yeah, there's, coincide with yeah, the... Yeah, there's uh, Apocrypha, but they're in terms no, no, of what... Apoc it's, it's their alternative scripture, basically, yeah. as well. Yeah. So only, I think only Isaiah matches really well because it's very poetic. It's difficult uh, to change. I, the I, narratives... I don't think find quite a lot of discrepancies. From what I'm aware of, the, the discrepancies aren't, they're very minimal in terms of okay. like what we have, because when we, they compared the Aleppo Codex to the Dead Sea Scrolls. only to do with the Isaiah Scroll, isn't it? The Great Isaiah Scroll. I, I don't think I, they looked at the other ones. I believe it was more. Okay. Yeah, but I would recommend you just to double check that. Yeah, we, and can, see. Do, we so, can do. So when we go into the prophecies, for example, the first prophecy, and the thing is about, like I say, prophecies are sometimes um, you have to kind of ask yourself what it's meaning. So what I'll do, actually, I'll do, I'll show you a different one. First of all, um, we we'll go to the book of Micah. This is a very clear prophecy. Micah five two. Now it says, but thou Bethlehem, Ephratah. Thou, though thou be little amongst the thousands of Judah, yet out of ye shall come forth unto me, that is to be a ruler in Israel, whose beginnings, whose going forth have been from old, from everlasting. Now, if you didn't know, there's actually two Bethlehems in Israel. I didn't know that. And Jesus was born in this one. So it's talking about Bethlehem where um, Judah, the tribe of Judah dwelled. Okay. So, we're, this, this is no I'm okay. I'm okay with yeah, that yeah. one. Yeah, I'm okay so, with that one. So, but the thing is, as well, when we look at the word in Hebrew from everlasting, it's actually used closer to eternity. It can also be used from an old time, but it can also be used for from eternity. Okay. So this is where the concept of a divine Messiah who is coming started to come from, because when we go to the other, I'll show you now. I'll show you the very first um, prophecy of Christ. It gives you a timeline. Genesis 49. 10. So it says the scepter. Scepter is a rod. Yeah, a rod. Yeah. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Mm -hmm. Now I can even go into the Jewish rabbi commentary and see what they said about it. So if I go into uh, the Talmud. 
So, because I, I could explain it, but I just want to show you, not, it's not even just my interpretation. So, uh, 49, 10. So that's the verse, the scepter shall not depart. So if I go to the Talmud and just look at some of the... What app is this? Uh, Sepharia. Sepharia. So it has, yeah. So it says... I was going to write that app down. It seems quite a nice app, doesn't it? Yeah, you can access... Um, like Jewish... Um, Jewish commentaries. Okay, yeah. So this is from Rab the Sadden Hadrin 586 and it says this as this is as it is taught in a Barita. The verse states the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet until Shiloh comes. The term Shiloh is understood as a reference to the Messiah, and therefore the verse is interpreted as delin delineating the authority of Jewish rulers during their exile. So obviously before the Messiah comes. So obviously their interpretation is a bit different because they don't. But what they're trying to say is this verse. So basically the verse is saying that the, there's a time frame for the Messiah to come. Now we know in the first century that Rome took the authority of um, capital punishment from, from Judaism. And they started changing the kingship as well that became less as a kingship and then the rulership was kind of going to mm. the power was going to I, I have no problems with these prophecies right. and the messiah yes what i would have issue is is does the old testament refer to a a divine yes. being right. messiah to come and die for the yes. sins of mankind so now, and resurrect after three days yeah. all right so now what i've shown you i'm just building up the evidence so we get a time frame so we know it was jesus yeah so obviously the michael one said this person is from eternity forever from everlasting so now let's just say it's vague okay i have to then substantiate with other evidence God. that this is saying that this person is an eternal being so now when we go to the words of jesus if we go to actually we'll start in mark first one one and it says the beginning of the gospel of jesus christ the son of god as it is written in the prophets behold i send my messenger before thy face which shall prepare the way before me the voice of the one crying in the wilderness prepare the way for the lord make his path straight john did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance of remissions of sins so what i want to draw your attention to is that he says as it is written in the prophets behold i send my messenger so then we have to go back into the old testament to understand what it's talking about and also we see in uh, matthew 11:10. Um, Jesus is with the people and they're talking about John the Baptist so he sees the Jesus says began to say unto the multitudes concerning John what have you gone out into the wilderness to see obviously we see that there's going to be John was baptizing in the wilderness so when we go forward Jesus also says for it is written of he whom it is written behold I send the messenger before thy face which shall prepare the way before thee so now when we go to the Old Testament, we go to, there's two passages. Yeah, Malachi 3.1. And if you're aware of the Malachi 3.1, it says the Lord God will visit his temple because it uses the word, when it says Lord, yeah. it, well, no, no, you use Ha-Adown, which is the title for God, okay. the Lord. So every, there's only, it's used only six times in the Bible, each time it's referring to God. And then we also go to Isaiah. Isaiah verse chapter 40 verse 3 so it says the voice of him that crieth in the wilderness prepare ye the way of the Lord now that's using the word Yahweh the divine name make straight unto the desert highway for our God so now why would we say would Jesus refer to people to this prophecy that says there's going to be someone who prepares the way for God now let's take that in conjunction with the Micah 5 2 where it says a ruler is going to come from Israel whose beginnings have been from everlasting, from eternity. We're building up a case. Now let me go to one thing in the book of John. There's something very interesting. There's I mean, two things. Islamically that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Normally when a prophet comes, yeah. 
It is through. It is the manifestation of God. Okay. So now we'll go we're to. We're okay with that. We'll go to, We'll, 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 we'll go to what John the Bat what, what John says. He says, John bear witness of him and cried. We have to ask why was John crying? He said, This is was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. Now John was older than Jesus. So how can John say he came before me if he was not the pre existing one? This would not make sense. Now we have to take it in context with the other verses, the old prophecies, and I can go to more prophecies because we have to take a whole holistic view of but what can is you being show, said. Can we, rather than showing, we're, what we're doing is we're interpreting the prophecies backwards. No, because from the Gospels, we're going back to the New Old Testament. Yes, yeah, because obviously... Can we go from the Old Testament yes. forwards, basically? Okay, but then that's why I started, for example, with the prophecy of the timeline of when Jesus will come. I'm okay with that, and, yeah. and I believe that those, okay. there, there are prophecies in the Old Testament. Yeah. But yeah, and, I don't believe so, the prophecies in the Old Testament so, refer. So Isaiah, Malachi 5.2, if you ask a Jewish person to interpret it, they will say that it is an angel who's going to prepare the way for God. Right? Okay. But we're saying no, it wasn't an angel, because a messenger or can be also in, passed as an angel, yes. Yeah. So they're, they're misinterpreting it. They're understanding it, but misinterpreting it because it's saying clearly that a messenger is preparing the way for God. Okay. And also in Isaiah, it confirms it. So when John is crying, saying this is the guy that came before me, and he also says, I was not even fit enough to strap his sandals. If he understood Jesus as a normal person, he wouldn't one not start crying and saying, this is the one who came before me. And there's another verse. But do you not find that a bit odd as well? Yeah. When John was arrested and in prison. No, John, John the Baptist. John yeah, John the Baptist was yeah, arrested yeah. in prison. Yeah. He sent his disciples to go and find Jesus and say to him, listen, are you the Messiah or not? Or is there somebody else coming? Do you not find that odd when he is so confident here? Yeah. And according to John's gospel where he says, look, behold the Lamb of God. But yet at the end of John's own life, he's not sure and thinking, is this really, are you really the Messiah or not? Uh, Which, I don't think he was unsure. Uh, well, for me, what, that shows, what, yeah, what's this shows the, the corruption what, of... No, let's go into the verse, because I don't know the verse off the top of my head. Then we can like... Oh, do you know the verse off the top of your head? At least read through, because, I, lots of my head. because I, I'm, not, I'm not sure of that. No, no, the one that where John the Baptist is in yeah. prison yeah. 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 and he sends his disciples. You see, the, 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 pro the problem is, in the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark and Luke has a very different understanding of Jesus' mission and John the Baptist's mission than in John. If you mash them all together... You get I mean, I mean, you know this. You've studied the, new, the Bible at university, haven't you? Yeah. You've got a master in the subject. I too have studied it. I know what you're talking about. What these Christians are doing, that they, they are mashing them all together, which is unhistorical. In John's Gospel, at the very beginning of the Gospel, Jesus is the word, is a Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Chapter one. No one, Jesus never doubts John the Baptist, like the entire of John's Gospel. In the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, he's never called the Lamb of God. Jesus, um, John the Baptist, doesn't know. He's so not I, sure. Hang on, I'm finished. It's not. As you've interjected, so he's I just want to answer. Can, can I just finish what I'm saying okay. before you interrupt? Um, well, you have no, you interjected, I know. So <laughs> that's why. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just. I just he want someone. Me. I just want he someone. Me but, to speak. but I just Can want. I just, finish? I just want someone to I just, answer I, I just want to finish, please. Me. Right, but let me just make my no, point, no, and you can incorporate it in because finish. you have come in to our conversation. He invited me. You have come into our conversation. Can I just finish my point? But let me just make a quick point, and you can incorporate into what you're saying. So, if you're not going to engage, then I will just continue talking to. And it's not the gospels. He doesn't want to. Jesus is now rude and not. John the Baptist trying to is. cut into yeah. the so conversation. What so he's doing, he's I'll mashing continue our conversation <laughs> because Paul is now interjecting. I'm saying, if he asked me to, I'm saying, he let's just come. Okay, did you ask the, the me to? Yeah, 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 yeah. You did so, ask me. So, so the point uh, of all I'm saying the point is I was this: making is what he's all, doing. Look, Paul, is he's if you're coming into our conversation, that we'll either move into a different direction. If you're going to impose yourself, we're having a very cordial discussion, and you've now come in and impose yourself. I haven't. Did you ask me to make a comment? So we're having a very cordial conversation. He asked me to make a comment. So, finished. Yeah, but if you make your point quickly, or as I'm asking you a question. Give me 30 to... seconds more. Right, give me 30 seconds. Okay. Just to finish my point. So John's John the Baptist never doubts Jesus because John has exalted John the Baptist and Jesus to make statements they never made in history. This is what standard biblical scholars say. In Matthew, Mark and Luke, as you know very well, John the Baptist doesn't know who Jesus is. 
He, he's unsure. He sent emissaries from prison out to find out who this man is. How do you explain the contradiction? John is not historical. Most, virtually all scholars, as you know, from studying this at university, do not see John as historical. Christians over here have not studied the Bible academically. They mash all these stories together and they have these issues. So John is unhistorical in his claims about Jesus. John the Baptist, according to the Synoptics, did not know or was unsure who Jesus was as the Messiah. He never thought he was God. He never thought he was divine in Matthew, Mark and Luke. Would you broadly accept that? Yeah, I mean, thank this, you. This is where it comes up. He's got a master's in the okay, subject. Thank you, thank you very much. He's got a master's. All right, thank you very much. The point I was trying to say, this comes, right. in, this, this no, comes into the discrepancies yeah. of, of the whole thing when you prove for one source, and that's why okay. we reject certain parts but, and we accept But I've taken from Mark the pro about the prophecy of Isaac. I've gone into Matthew to confirm where he's repeating this prophecy Separate, yeah, Separate. about the Christ. So we're going into the Old Testament. Notice now Paul is being rude <laughs> and interjection <laughs> and heckling. This is the tactics of the uh, Islamic Dawa team. They have no courtesy. They have no courtesy. I, we were having a cordial conversation and now he's interjecting and now heckling from the side. So, as I said, we went from Mark and we went into uh, Matthew as well, Jesus' word. We then went back into the Old Testament because we can say we have to now build up a case to support that this person in the Old Testament is being prophesied as one from everlasting. Yes. So now I've given you obviously the Malachi because there's no other interpretation to say because it, even if you want to go to a rabbi, they will say it's an angel preparing the way for God's physical manifestation in the temple. So we can either take their interpretation or the Christian interpretation that the, the, the angel was actually John the Baptist preparing the way for God. Then we go back to Isaiah, which also confirms that there is a someone in the wilderness who is also preparing the way for God. Then obviously we jump, yes, to the book of John, where it says, John was crying, yeah. no, where he said the, the one who came after me was actually before me. And also we see when John, um, Thomas, um, sees Jesus again and he says, my Lord, my God. Now, when we look at the Greek, it is, let me just give you the exact Greek. Ho kurios, moi kai ho theos moi, which literally means the God of me and the Lord of me in the Greek. Now we I can, can let me can I confirm that quickly? Yes. Uh, do you know the passage of the top uh, you got there? Yeah, John twenty eight. John twenty twenty eight. John twenty twenty eight. Twenty-eight. Yes. Oh, curious my, my God, my Lord, mm -hmm. Kai and Hothios Moi, yes. my God. Yeah. Where did you? What did you say, sir? That it means the God of me and the Lord of me. No, sorry. It's my Lord. Okay. The God of me would make the Moi dative. Yeah. Okay. Would be moi. This is mu. So how would you translate it? As the as the the West Coast heart, my Lord and my God. It's well, an explanation. Excellent yeah, language. but that's how they kind of. Yeah, that's how they. No, put it in. grammatically, if it was yes. to be my God of me, yes, it would make the mu. Okay. Would be a dative stative. Now, do you have the Septuagint on that? I can get it. Okay. Now I want to show you something. Uh, can I get it? I've got the blue letter Bible. No, it won't be in the blue. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It will it, be. Would it be yeah, in there? Yeah. I think you can go. I don't know if you can go from the app, but if you go through the internet, you can also. Cause it's, what do you want oh, to you go to the Old Testament. Okay. So in Psalms uh, 35 23, it uses almost the exact same phraseology. Psalms what? Uh, 35, 23. Where's Psalms? This, uh, I've lost it. Where's Psalms? Can you see it? Old Testament. I'm in the Old Testament. Psalms. Uh, okay. What did you say? What 35, 23. Stir up thyself and awake to the justice due to me, even unto my cause my God and my Lord. Mm -hmm. Now let's look at the Greek because it's exactly the same in the Septuagint. They've obviously moved the Lord and my God to yeah, the yeah, other yeah. way around. Now this term appears 135 times in the Bible and it's always used to reference God. What, my God and my Lord? Yes. 
Yeah, it's an explanation. It's an explanation. It's like, it's like me saying, so, oh my God. No, because that's a fallacy and then anachronism. Because, oh my God, is something that only came into tradition in around the 1300s. Especially in Christian tradition, because it was always initially used for hymns. Oh God, my God, blah, blah, blah. It was never ever used as a uh, expression of shock this is what we like you say you cannot read something back into history yeah yeah we, you would have to find me historical evidence of one person using that phrase in the bible it's never used in that sense every single of the 135 times when used by a jew it's never referred to as a statement of shock. Also, that would have been blasphemy and using the God, Lord's name in vain to say my God. That's why, like, even in Christianity, it's like it's kind of like blasphemy. Like you're saying the Lord's name in vain. And if, so, if you look at, it, so Jesus never actually corrected him to say like, you know, kind of don't say this statement. But the main point is that every time we see it in the Bible, 135 times, it's always used by a Jew to refer by God. Not Now, if you're saying it's a term of shock, now you're reading into history and you would have to provide me historical evidence that that has been an accepted term of shock for a Jewish person. Hold on. So, Okay, there is. So even you have. Um, okay. So you even got fourth-century Christian bishops. Fourth century. I said from who are, I know. I get that. I get yeah. that. But even some of them will say that this was not referring to Jesus as God. I think most of the academics say this. But also, I've, I've written here, it's, it's from, a, from a surprise. Um, the argument is weak. Argument says throughout the Gospels, the Greek noun for God, Theos, mm -hmm. is used in a variety of situations. For example, Jesus' proclamation on the cross. Yeah, but I've told you the context, my God and my Lord. So you can say my God or whatever, but we're saying that exact phraseology, my Lord and my God. Every time you see it in the Bible, used by Jews, it's only used to refer to God. So therefore, you may have to update your commentary. I think the uh, uh, most, if you look at all the academics, yes, they come to the same thing as well. Okay, that it's an explanation. Well, it's not a yeah, divine well, statement. In, well, in that show sense. me where historically in the Jewish culture, because we, we can't be reading into something, you're throwing in an assumption. Because if we look at the so Bible, is Jesus Hortheos, the God? Why would you say he is? Yes. Which is the father basically, isn't it? No. The God. They just knew one they just knew one they just knew one God. So therefore if he's saying God, because if it's they believe in a triune God, then he can be called the God. Because he is God. What are they gonna say, the second God or whatever? They just so in John him one God. one, what yes. does that say? In the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. Why didn't that have the article in there? The article of God. Explain. So John mean? 1 1 yes. does not have the article. Whenever the article is placed in front of Theos okay. in the New Testament, it always refers to God the Father. Okay. So a lot of the academics have presented this argument as well, thematically, okay. saying that this explanation is, 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 is not him referring to Jesus as the God the Father. Okay. But then I've shown you from some the same phraseology where it's referring to such God. It's using the same phraseology. Turn up yourself and wait for me, Justice. Yeah, go to yeah. the Greek. Just yeah, you're right. Yeah. But the point is, the, right. the point the so academics who are, who are making... Yeah, but who are they referring <clears throat> to? We, let's not go to the academics. Let's see what the Bible uses. It was in the Septuagint as how they so translated it. Why can't it. Thomas say, why can't it be an yeah. explanation? Why not? Be why can't because it? you're reading into that. I'm saying, <clears throat> give me a biblical... <clears throat> Um, clarification that this was used at the time because we have to then go into the Bible so you look at the language so if we're seeing the same phraseology that was used in Psalms in the Septuagint how is it then now changing because you're talking about the article but if they're using something similar in the in, you're saying because the article is different in John, but then in Thomas, what Thomas says, so therefore we can extrapolate a different understanding. Yeah, but I'm saying to you, if John uses, in the book of John, what Thomas says, 
and then we ex compare that to what was said in Psalms in the Septuagint when they use the same phraseology then that argument falls apart because yes you may say they're article but then when we're comparing the Bible within the Bible then we see a consistency no, no, the point I'm saying is the Psalms of Solomon, yes. or the Psalms of yeah, whatever it was, in the Psalms, whatever, where, yeah. they, where they have that story, or referring to that, that phrase, yeah. it's referring to God. And yeah. I'm fine with that yeah. as well. But he's using the same phraseology as uh, so that, that, and, that and, you and, refer, referring to God is not, the, we can argue, is not the same as in John 1 1. So no, it's different. Yes, so therefore you're trying to apply John 1 1. No, no, to, I'm saying that's one of the many reasons. Yes, but as we should well. use the Bible to interpret it himself, not then try and throw in evidence of saying, okay, well, this is different, therefore well, it must mean this. All, 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 all Thomas is saying yes. is a phrase that yes. he has read yes. in the Psalms. Yes. It doesn't mean that he is calling no, Jesus. No, he's not referring to something he's read in Psalms. Because now you're trying to extrapolate well, that meaning and that's, of what he that's said. That's an example. Because we know, if we look at the Bible, I said to you, there's 135 times that phraseology is used. Yeah. Now, fine. if every single time it refers to the same thing, you cannot then say that one time was a moment of shock. Yeah, but why not? Why, why can't? Why, says who? Because I would say, then give me historical evidence that this is something that Jews knew as a term of shock. You're, you're, we've got 135 instances. You're trying to take the outlier, make, take, to make this an outlier, to say it is something different. But then we have no historical evidence to confirm the what absence you're of historical The uh, absence of that kind of uh, thing does not count at all. So therefore, shouldn't we go and look at what the, how, the Jews use, how the Jews used to refer to God, to use that as our basis for John's um, for Thomas no, you got to take into a lot. You got to take a lot more into account when you do. When you've, you you've only to this. taken into account John one one, and a lot of other passages. When, Such as when, what? Well, for example, when Jesus yes. was uh, when the Jews came to him okay. and they wanted to pick up stones to stone him. Okay. And they said, and Jesus asked, "Why do you want to stone me?" Yes. And they said to him, "You are a mere man. Yes. Are claiming to be God." Yes. That was Jesus's perfect opportunity. But to why say, would Jesus say, "My Lord, my God"? No, I'm asking that. I'm, yeah. I'm interpreting the whole thing. Okay. That was the perfect opportunity for yeah. Jesus to, to tell the people, "Yes, I am God." That's, but that's what a false he said, argument. no, what he said yes. instead was, "Don't you know that in your own scripture?" Yes. That that God that, that people say he are God. He is explaining what he meant. But we're, we're going on to something else. No, but we're you, you got to look at the whole yeah, but I've, thing. Though, yeah, but I've it? built up an argument for an artist. But we're focusing on what Thomas is saying. Why yeah, did and Thomas I'm telling you. refer to Jesus in a term that Jews only use to refer to God? Let's, we can deal with the, what Jesus was saying secondary, but I'm saying to you, because your first argument was, some scholars say, because the Greek does not match with John 1-1, one, one. but all. I'm saying to you, the, no, the no, no, terminology... No, 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 that was one of the reasons, but yes. the vast majority, this is an open to interpretation. Yes. This is not a so solid thing. Okay. You can't say categorically, nobody knows the intentions of, of, of Thomas. Okay. Yeah, but so when, we, when, when, what you're saying yes. is that he said that he preferred to Jesus God. Okay. You can't prove that. While I'm saying the same okay. thing, so on, the, was the, so on the balance of probability, we have the word used 135 times and we have no other historical evidence of a Jew saying, oh my God, in this sense. Why not? How do you know that? Uh, how do you know that? I don't have it. Okay, so I'm saying from the scripture we have 135 instances. Now you're trying to now say you found that, because this is why, for example, and also we're taking what Thomas said, in conjunction with the arguments I'm presenting you to show that there was a divine being that was coming in the flesh. So now we can take all that together and say, well, did Thomas know? Because we've now added that to the comment of John who said, he who came after me was before me. But we know John was older than Jesus. Okay. And we have Thomas now confirming what John is confirming. Because John was... You can do that. Of course, yes. you can You can pick little verses and, and interpret them that way. Okay. By all means, you can. But when you look at the whole picture, okay. you don't come to that conclusion. Okay, now, so you've not really been able to deal with this, but we'll go into the next point. You're saying that we'll Jesus said... We'll end up arguing the same point. Well, you said again. Jesus said he wasn't God. So... Obviously, you, we, I don't think you've adequately, and we can let the people at home decide whether you adequately dealt with that point. But let's go on to the next point, just so we don't go kind of fall. So yeah, you're saying that Jesus was saying that he wasn't God. Yes. Okay. So we know there would have been a perfectly good reason for Jesus not to say that. Why? Because, for, first of all, Jesus said, the hand, the Son of Man will be de delivered into the hands of uh, like the Pharisees, whatever. He'll be killed, and in three days he shall rise 
rise again. That Jesus was prophesying his death. And we also I don't believe he actually said that. Okay. So what did he say? So if you look at it, is that what the scholars say? Uh, I've, I've come to that conclusion. Okay. So now I'm just show, highlighting because a minute ago you're appealing to scholars. Now you're also this, interlacing it with your no, own opinion. Of course. We yeah, that's fine. That. No, I'm fine. But I'm just showing that the, the arguments as well. But I'm not no, no, discounting the, the, your the, opinion. The, the, but the, the Thomas bit. Yes. We'll, we'll, we'll agree to disagree on that. Okay. That is interpretation. Okay. This bit. There. Are, how many? For example, how many times but, does Jesus prophesy his death? But but but. Let me just answer that. Good. But I just say, this is the Thomas thing. Shouldn't we look at, as a historian, look at things in chronology? So if we're looking at every single time the word has been used, and then someone else comes and uses it again, but it doesn't. It, it does. Thomas does not say, "You are my God. You are my Lord." He's okay. simply saying, "My Lord okay. and my God." All right. We don't know and how he said. We don't. We haven't. We haven't heard him say it. Okay. All we have is the writings of somebody who came later on who, who wrote it down. Yeah, but we're not saying who wrote it, but we're just saying from the text, what are we extrapolating from exactly. the text? We don't, so, we so can't be certain. If we're that's looking not, at for me, that's not strong enough. Well, if to, we have 134 instances before, and then now you're trying to say there, that this term was one of so shock, if Thomas, it seems if, a bit If Thomas said, my God, yes. Now that's been used five, six hundred times in the Old Testament. You okay. would come to the conclusion that he was just, that he was calling Jesus well, God. If if he said my God and you were arguing that something else, then I would say your argument has more strength. Why? Because my because, God, because, that phrase has been used five, yeah, six hundred times because in the Old Testament. Because if people were using it in different contexts, we don't know though, do we? But I'm just saying, if it was, then that would strengthen your argument. Let's so we would have to look. Then if it wasn't, let's say it was used in the Old Testament referring to Yahweh, as it is, but God then, and, but, and the so Old then Testament is all in Jesus. Yahweh. Because because we look at the context of he doesn't we, say okay he doesn't say if we look at that, that verse again and we we'll just look at it two minutes and then we'll go into the next go point on. so what is the time it's getting quite late as well isn't it yeah so we'll, we'll just move on from this point but because uh, we just want to look at the whole it thing it gets boring to, going over the same point yeah it does it does get boring going over the same like same point so um let me just make this one very quick. what point are you trying to make now no just to see what he said and what happened afterwards what jesus said afterwards. so obviously he says and thomas no. So then he said to Thomas, reach hither thy and finger touch my hand and touch my, my hands, hand. reach yeah. blah blah blah. And then Thomas answered him and said to him, my Lord, my God. And Jesus said to him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Okay, fine with that. Okay. So the, 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 you can't, from that, it's, yes. it's, 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 for me, it's weak. Okay. As a solid thing saying, Thomas is calling him my Lord and, 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 and Yahweh. Okay. Well, again, like it's, we'll, it's open we'll, to we'll, interpretation. Well, we'll Let's move, move on. on to the point, but obviously we can either compare this against 134 other instances or a one yep. uh, rogue, ra you have, rogue you verse. You have said that many times. No they won't convince me, though. I'm afraid. Yeah. Okay. So then, obviously, you said um, is it John eight somewhere that Jesus had the perfect opportunity yes, to because, proclaim his divinity yeah, because Jesus came for a purpose. Because Jesus knew the heart of the Sanhedrin, for example, they were, will, they were wanting to stone him. Because Jesus came for a purpose to preach the message of the coming kingdom of God. To die on the cross was his purpose, Yes, wasn't it? but if he had said it that time, what would have happened? They would have stoned him and blah, blah, blah. He's God. He can miracles. But he, he can, he can yeah, evade but, them. Like yeah, he did. but the thing is, he, he did pass through them, exactly. didn't he? Exactly. He, no, no, he would evade them and disappear. But the thing is, he had a purpose to serve. So that's why he, Jesus used a lot of double talk. And we'll, I'll show you some, some more. Oh, of can, you, can you, can you, you got the passage there. What does he say to them? Instead of, instead of saying yes I am God what yeah. did he say when they, when they he, he talked him. about um, Elo, the, weren't, the, weren't the judges called Elohim so right. he's, he's explaining to them oh, right. that the people the previous people have been called gods yeah. how did he make that explanation okay. what's the purpose of doing that well because Jesus said okay yeah. why, why make that point because Jesus came and let me read you the parable he said no 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 that, that John, yeah. read John, so that, John the one that we're talking about yes Jesus was accused of being yeah, claiming yeah. to be God yeah, yeah. so he did not he did not deny it okay, yes. whatever but he what he did he, he made a point yes what was the point he made Ex explain to me the point he made the point he made was that in the past people had used this name Elohim like freely so it doesn't and mean that they were a God per so se. why make that point because Jesus knew what their intention was so Jesus you was the master of double talk 
wouldn't it be a simple explanation be that he made that point to show them yes. that he is not claiming to be God? No. And I'll expand an, another point. Okay. When Jesus, before Jesus was crucified in the court, they asked him, are you the son of the blessed one? Yeah. What did he say to them? I don't believe that happened. Okay. So, because it's, for, it, it's, it's, it's the authors copying Daniel 7.13. Yes. Daniel 7.13 okay. has never been interpreted messianically. Okay. Is, and, it, and Jesus, yeah. So, it so the, the book of Daniel says the one like the son of man. Yes. Like the son of man. Now that, a man. Now that, that, someone who looks like a man. No, yeah, exactly. So it's a simile. Now in the simile, the, how is it a simile? Because it says the one like the son yeah, of you man. You are like a son of man. That's what Daniel was talking about. When, when, yes, when you use a simile, if I say you're strong like an ox, it means that the first object of that sentence is not the literal of the second part. So you're not literally strong like an ox. The ox is the literal part, you are the figurative part. So when it says one like the son of man, the son of man is a literal, but it's saying something figuratively was like the son of man. So therefore the, the figurative thing cannot be a human because you would not use a simile. That's why again I repeat to say you may not understand. If I say you're sweet like chocolate, you the object are not literally sweet like the object which is chocolate. No, yes? no, I think you're applying you're applying this English grammatic to the two. Shall we look at what the Hebrews? Okay, shall we see? Daniel seven. 13. So what do you say? What did he I see? I saw in a night vision and yeah. behold one like the son of man came with the clouds. Okay, so what so, did he see? So therefore he saw a divine being and non-human, you can even say an angelic being, but it was not human. That's why he's comparing it to a human. He's saying whatever he saw looks like a human. Okay. So this is a simile to say that whatever this yeah, he is. he looks like a man basically. Yes, isn't it? Yeah, but I if you look that. like a man you can't be a man because it's a simile. It's a vision, he saw yes. from a distance, if I see you from a distance yes. and I say, oh, I think he looks like a man. I'm not, I don't mean that you're not a no, man. No, because he saw clearly it no, coming on clouds. He saw the, the, the vision. vision. Yeah, yeah the, the vision you don't know. No, the vision was very clear. That's why Daniel further goes on to see what he said, sees. And then he said the nations will gather around yeah. this son of man and serve the son of man or worship the son of man. So he's very vivid in what he saw. Okay. So he's not saying, oh, I had a vision, my eyes were blurry and I couldn't see. No, no, no I, get, I get all yeah. that. I, I interpret, I, I understand Daniel's vision. Yes. And the vast majority of, of academics as well yes. refer to this as referring to the man here is, is, is the nation of Israel. And the other animals... The son of are, man is the nation of Israel. Yes. And the other king, other beasts are basically the that other be the empire. Because when Jesus said, you shall see the son of man coming in the clouds. Of course. And we also see before... Jesus Ste We saw also see Stephen. When he had, before he was stoned, he saw the vision of it's who? the same Luke who wrote Acts. I'm saying to you, yeah, but we're saying, this, this is when, take, yeah, but when we see Stephen, what did he see? He saw a vision and, and Jesus at the right hand side, yes? Yeah, of course. See, okay. It's the same person writing the same right. thing, isn't it? Okay. This is where it gets difficult, where right. you take the Gospels as Gospel. So I'm just, no, no, but I'm and saying this is what the text is saying. Of course. This because I've not, your, your I'm not interpreted says. anything. I'm saying to you, this is a simile. It's very clear. I don't need to say. I understand that. Yes. But what I'm saying to you is those words. I don't believe Jesus spoke those words on the, in the San Andreas. Okay. That this thing. Plus, saying those phrases okay. is not blasphemy either, right. is it? But then even saying that, let's just Go on. pause that point. Daniel is clearly saying someone looking like a man who's not a man is going to visit the earth. No, he's not saying that. So what is it? It's saying? all a vision. It's all. How does he interpret it? It's, it's talking about the. Are we talking? Do you also believe that Daniel, that beasts will come out of the earth and they will come in the future as well? Well, in terms of the. the that's that's the, what Daniel seven is talking about. Yes. So you, if you're taking that literally, yes. you got to take the whole thing literally. You got to be consistent. Okay. So I'm when when it, Daniel, it's a that Daniel has visions of different things that symbolize different things, but he never says those beasts are like something. So he's clearly saying of course he describes a beast it's exactly. like a leopard it's like this yes as what he can see all right so Daniel now therefore if he says vision. it is like because i can't we can look at the verse but if he says it is like a leopard therefore it is not a leopard but it has the appearance of a leopard of course they have right. big iron okay. horns and so iron when he says he sees that. one like the son of man 
Yeah. We know it's not a, a physical man. What is it? What would it be then? Something that looks like a man. Like what? What would that be? It could be, let's just say an angel, a divine being. Fair enough. In the appearance of a man. Yeah, it could be. Because we have to ask, why did Jesus keep refer repeatedly referring to himself to the Son of Man? And in this court of the Sanhedrin, he said, uh, the Son of Man, you That's see not the Son a divine title. No, let me Son of man is say title. one other thing. Go on. <laughs> Sorry, because I know you've got to go and I'm trying to build up this case. Go so, for it, build your case. So, we also see some of the words that Jesus spoke. Where? And, for example, uh, the more Son of Man stuff. No, this is in the, okay, this is John 8, 23. Jesus said, you are from below, I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. I'm fine with that. And we go to John 3, 12, No, I'm fine with 13. that. And many prophets have said the same and thing. Then Jesus Our said, said the exact same thing. Okay, so which prophet said, no one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the son of man. So no one has ascended into heaven. Yeah, apart from he who descended from heaven. Did Elijah go to heaven? He, huh? Did Elijah ascend to heaven? Well, he ascended to somewhere. Where? We don't know. Did Enoch go to heaven? Enoch was taken up. Where? Well, we don't know. He just says he got in a chariot. But can't you see? Okay. Elijah ascended to heaven. Okay. Well, we don't... So clearly no, no, no. either Jesus no, no, no. was wrong or John was no, wrong. But it doesn't explicitly say because it says Elijah was taken up. Because we know, for example... In a example, chariot of fire. Yeah, into yeah, yeah, heaven. Yeah. Well, it doesn't explicitly say. So he could have, what? because for example, we have the story, the we have the story of like Abraham's bosom, right? Abraham was in Abraham's bosom. Abraham at that time, at the, of the time of Lazarus was not in heaven. He was in Abraham's bosom. So therefore, we do not Where know. Where is that then? That's uh, not in heaven. So Abraham wasn't. Abraham's bosom, no, because then you had the divide where uh, the dead man was and he was in the flames and blah, blah, blah. Because we, when we see, I think in the book of Jude, Jesus goes to the captives and then he ascends to heaven with them, right? The book of Jude. Yeah, you see, because it says... Rome, I, uh, Romans I think, talks about that. Or Paul it might, talks it about might be, that. But Jesus took the, 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 the keys of Hades. So basically we see that story which kind of says that Jesus descended and they'll say he preached to whoever and then he ascended so therefore we have no problem with saying that yes it may have looked like they went in the sky but it doesn't necessarily mean they were in heaven and then Jesus also says I saw Satan fall from heaven either Jesus is building up this kind of phraseology and giving people an indicators of who and what he was because that's why when we go back to the Old Testament and I also gave you that Malachi and also the Isaiah because and John and Micah um, Wait, go to 2 Kings 2.11, what's that all about? Uh, read it. Uh, 2 Kings 2, oh, 2, I'll just Google it quickly. Okay. And it came to pass as they... And Elijah went up by whirlwind into heaven. Okay. So Elijah did go to heaven. So either Jesus was wrong in that statement or John, the author, who I believe, made it up. Well, again, I will say I will look into this because what I this can easily be interpreted is as you can interpret no 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 but, yeah but that's what I'm saying because I don't want to misquote the Bible but again because we have this idea of Abraham's bosom so therefore into the heavens as in because the skies was also referred to as the heavens yeah, yeah. so we know the in same the Bible, Greek word yeah, yeah, the same yeah, Greek word exact, was used for that exactly so no, but, but then where do I stand you can interpret anything around how you want it to be because and we I can do the similar thing here because as well. we look at things in context and I, and I a, looked at we look context. at things holistically so we look on the, for example again so okay, okay. If, you, if you read the first All right. three wait, wait, wait. okay go on. if you want to take that literally that's fine I, I, Jesus, th I think Elijah went into heaven no no now, I don't believe that but okay. I think John the, the author okay put those words into Jesus's mouth because it's clearly wrong. Elijah okay. and the Jews knew this. So it was in heaven. So if you, if we're going by the Old Testament, Elijah went into heaven. Yeah. If that's what you're agreeing with, then when the Old Testament says that God is coming, then we cannot then. I'm asking you then to be consistent with how you interpret it because we don't need to go to the, uh, the New Testament, the Old Testament, if we're going to take these things literally. No, 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 no. we don't do that. We take, we All take, right. so, so, look. You, so now you, you yourself are now kind of flipping and flopping and what you want to accept as well. Okay, the, the, the Old Testament has many things that okay. are allegorical and many things that are literal. Okay. 
you, do you want do you agree oh, with that or not agree okay. with that? So now when I said that to you, you were like, no, but this heaven no, means because X, Y, and Z. And John is confused. But now you're now going back to no, say when, when that it's allegorical or not allegorical. When Holy Scriptures talk about God coming, yes. It doesn't and okay. generally Holy Scripture the Quran the, okay. the Islamically we believe that. Yes, but God manifests okay. himself. Malachi three one, what is the Jewish interpretation? That God you, is physically even the rabbis. So therefore, if going, we should either go to the Christian interpretation or we can just stick with their rabbi's interpretation. They all knew that this was talking about, this was not an allegorical verse. So they're talking about Yahweh coming down to earth. To visit his temple, because we know Ma Ma Malachi was the last prophet before yeah. Jesus. We know, I think it's in the book of Ezra, that he saw the, the, um, the presence of God descend, ascend from the temple and leave. Now the Jews, this is why Jews want the third temple rebuilt because they believe if they rebuild the sacrificial that system come. that he will come and this is when the prophecy will be fulfilled. So this is why we have all this issue with the third temple. They've always yeah. understood this as this is a requirement for the Messiah to come. So therefore, if we, we want to then go to either the Christian interpretation or the Jewish interpretation, we both agree that the second person is God. So therefore, you coming out with some scholarly or something outside, now you're reading into the text and accusing us. You're doing what you're accusing us of doing because we should go with what was the earliest interpretation of this verse. Yeah, I'll, I'll look it from up, the I'll Old Testament. Up. That's what I'm saying. There's no one who can mess around with that Malachi three one. However, to say that, that Malachi three one yes. was that was that was that a messianic passage. Well, it's talking about um, you could it talks about the the no, but it, up, it is a messianic. It, no, no, no. It talks about Yahweh coming, right? And it talks about uh, at the uh, end of days, Yahweh coming. Let's see what it says. It's 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 the authors Matthew, Mark, and Luke who are now but I'm saying, saying yeah, that but Jesus I'm, is no this. because I'm saying to you from the Old Testament we clearly see the prophecies say who the Messiah will be and what he will be because that's why I want to read to you Malachi. Three one again. Yeah, but this is a this is not a passage. It's right. not a messianic because it passage, says, is it? It says, "Behold, I will send my messenger, yeah. and he will prepare the way before me." God yeah. is speaking, so he's saying literally. Then it says, "And the Lord," and that's just used for God. That's ha, fine. Ha Adon, who will seek shall kindly come to his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant. Who is the messenger of the covenant? Whom ye whom ye delight in? Behold, he shall come. See if the Lord of the host. That, who did that? So they are the same people. Oh, who, yeah, who, yeah, who, so who so Jesus those? was the bringer of the new covenant. Okay. So therefore, that's why from the Old Testament, we can start... Well, who says those words in the New Testament? Who said these words? Yeah. What do you mean? Well, who, who does that refer to in the New Testament? To Jesus. So when Jesus, and they were asking Jesus about who John the Baptist is, yeah. he said, he refers them to a prophecy that says there will be a messenger. Says who? Says Jesus. Correct. It says the authors. Yes. But right. I'm, but, but wait, wait, do you now see what I'm doing? Yeah, but the authors are yeah, but this now, yeah, but now you, applying yeah, it to but, Jesus. No, no, but I'm not applying it to you. I'm saying Jesus said these words. Yeah, but how do I know? Okay, regardless of whether you, the semantics or whether you do, we're saying what does the text say? The te oh, right? That's the, the text well, the says that Jesus is God. To, what about you're, 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 you're doing two different things now? You're trying to question the authenticity of what they were writing, but I'm saying the text is clearly saying whether Jesus said it or not, that's not an argument we're getting into. That's like a tangent if you want to go into textual criticism, criticism or whatever. But we're saying, yeah, something else like if Jesus said these words in the book of Matthew and I don't think many people have because we Paul was saying something about the synoptics so Matthew yeah, yeah. is from the synoptics now we're going into the Old Testament and the Old Testament is clearly Jesus is referring people back to this to say that a messenger is coming to prepare the way for God so therefore we take this in conjunction and say why what why was Jesus telling them and why was Mark saying this thing as well because we have it in Mark, we have it in I mean, taking it, taking it allegorically or taking it either way. Yes. For me, whenever a prophet but this, comes... This, this phraseology has never ever been used. That's fine, but if for me, Islamically, whenever yes. a prophet comes, yes. that is the manifestation of God. Okay. So, but this is saying that look, God literally... We cannot take, read into it a Jewish interpretation. Uh, no, but I don't, I, don't believe, I don't believe that God literally... But how comes can, to earth but and yes, does but things how, like that. As a historian, we look at things chronologically. Chronologically, you're yeah. reading back into history from an Islamic perspective. What I'm saying to you is why, if these are written in earliest sources, 
that predate Christianity? That they, is well, firstly, something? they don't predate Christianity. We don't know that. Okay. So, so when, you can, when, we can when source does, that. When, what is the oldest um, manuscript, of, manuscript of Malachi? No, no, no. You're talking about the commentary of that. No, I'm just saying, days. looking at the, the, the oh, I'm I saying the, 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 the actual manuscript. Yeah, but the, that yeah. text is never, it's not a messianic text. Okay. And that all that is referring to is a messianic coming who is preparing so, the way for so when, God to come. So when Jesus, at the Last Supper, says to drink the, the wine and the bread, and this is a sign of the new covenant. It's Paul. The Last Supper. It's Paul. The Last Supper. 1 Corinthians, Paul is the first to actually declare. I'm saying. If a non-Christian or a non-Muslim, an atheist who's never heard about you of our two faiths, yes. if I give them the book of the Torah, will they, un will they get, will they, get no. will they and will they get any inkling that this five these five books yes. are about Jesus? Will they get any inkling that this sacrificial system is a temporary thing and that is is paving the way for a future from, messianic from, figure? From, from the Old Testament, they wouldn't get it. That's so, why Jews. But then, but then that is that is a Christian reading it backwards. If you read the Old Testament, yes, you will never come to the conclusion. No, but this is see, this is being this, a but this is the nuance because the thing is that's why we have to go to that classical understanding because the earliest uh, because we know, for example, in early Judaism we had the concept of called the two powers in heaven. I know that. There's a book called the whole book about yes. that. Yes. Yeah. Now the reason why that they were able to believe this is because through their culture and through the the Old Testament. They understood that there was some, somehow two Yahwehs. This did some not, Jews believe that, yeah. Well, it wasn't heretical until the second century. After now, the Christianity came along. Exactly. And now, what a coincidence! Because the Christians co were convincing everyone, hey, these th there's two Yahwehs, and actually one of them is Jesus. This is why they could believe in monotheism and still believe in. Actually, I can't take that. No, if you read that book, there's a book, there's a book written by a scholar called Two Power Ways in Heaven. Yeah, yeah he really um, quotes them a lot. Yeah, Alan uh, Siegel. Yeah, yeah, and I don't think he. It's not too. There, they believed in divine beings. Yeah, exactly. But one Yahweh. No, yeah, one Yahweh. But divine beings, like yes. angels and other creations, yes. were there. That's right. fine. No, but then they also believed because they. And that's why. What did they um, Like the memorite as well. So this concept of two Yahwehs, because if you look at Genesis nineteen twenty four, two Yahwehs are named. And when you actually look at the language of the Old Testament, let me just show you something very very quickly. Let's just do five minutes and we'll wrap up. Go on. Um, Let me just find the verse, my verse, my phone is just recite. Because we have to then, as historians, ask ourselves, how did they read this? If they were Unitarians, how did they read into the text? Yeah, I know, I know, I know the passage you're talking about. Yeah. But that's the way the Hebrew was simply phrased. So are you familiar with Isaiah uh, 48, uh, 16? What does it say? Okay, let me just... I don't, I don't know ref references, I don't... I don't okay, know that's my references. Because obviously... But they're talking about God. raining heaven, raining... No, no, not that one. That's uh, Genesis 9 and 24. Yeah. The two Yahwehs. So we obviously wouldn't have known this is what would have come from this. Yeah, but there's course. many but there's, other things. There's too. many other places. There's other passages we talk about, like I don't know the wife of I forget his name. Lamech. Uh, Lamech. Yeah. yeah. And she's but he talked to himself in the third person. Exactly. And that, that, that this, is, this, this is, is common. But this is, in, in, but there was a difference the, between that one because in that Genesis 19:24 they're talking about location. It says Yahweh rained down from heaven, from Yahweh in heaven, fire yeah. and brimstone. So he's not saying. Uh, Yahweh rained down fire and brimstone from heaven. He's saying Yahweh rained down from Yahweh above. No Jew interpreted that to be two Yahweh. Oh, Let me just see. Uh, Jews, Jews interpreted it to be. Can you get up um, Isaiah 48 16? And yeah, after this we'll wrap up. But it's been a good conversation anyway. It has, it has. Isaiah 48. It's getting cold as well. Where's Isaiah? There it is. 48, 60, 15. So it says, I, I even I, I have yeah. spoken, yea, I have called him, I have brought him, and he shall be made, he shall make his way prosper, prosperous. And 16. Come ye unto me, hear ye this, from the beginning, I have not spoken in secret, from the time that it was, here, there, I am, there am I, and now the Lord uh, Yahweh has sent me and his spirit. And, yet, and who's talking in that verse? I have no idea because I've not, I don't know so, the context so of So God this. is speaking in that verse saying God has sent me and his spirit, with his spirit. 
you know, this is, I, I don't know. Yeah, it's, I'll it's, say it's a I'll difficult say, one for me I'll, to. I'll say, yeah, that's fine. We may, you may not know about it now. No. Research into that verse because that verse as well causes a lot of Jewish people a lot of difficulty. They might say it's, um, there is an explanation, but it's a very quite weak one. But what they say because it talks about the Spirit, God, and God is also speaking, saying He's been sent by who? If I remember. So now, if you're a classical Jew, this goes into the whole two uh, powers yeah, in yeah, heaven. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I read Rashi's commentary on that verse. Okay. And Rashi was simply saying, I think this is the prophet Isaiah speaking in verse 16. Okay. That's what Rashi said. Yeah. But I'll say you just look into it if you're not 100 sure. I mean, if you're here again, we'll, we can have a we can do again. discussion and stuff. Because obviously you're doing your Bible country commentary. I'm finished so. with that anyway. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's finished. But well, so, getting there. Yeah, it was a nice conversation. It was. And you can do a conclusion I just do a no. wrap up and just say look when we look at the Bible people like to take a scholarly, scholarly approach. approach to the Bible and saying well this discrepancy that discrepancy but then sometimes when we even apply that to the Quran it's like a double standard but what I'm trying to say is that we should look at things historically and the progress of the revelation not say I'm coming from this starting point and then read back because he's, even he's telling us because even he's though you me. may say Christians read into the text we know for example through the two powers in heaven this was something that had confused the earliest Jews and then we have to historically say why did these earliest Jews if they were Unitarians have What's this that? concept because we never ever see this concept in let's say Islam because the Quran is very clear about monotheism and Unitarianism. The so therefore, okay, on, yeah, so therefore, if we're taking a historical approach, we have to look at things holistically and take into account why these people also believed in these certain um, principles as well. So that's what my, my uh, advice, to, advice me. to you would be, to look at everything holistically and also the references where God seems to be talking about being sent by another God because there's many verses you have to go deep into the Old Testament to do to find out those verses yeah. and if you no, my, you my, to... my thing was simply yeah as you said I'll, I'll take on I'll take on those points but what I'll try to avoid yeah. is reading prophecies backwards yes when Paul talks about interpreting or in Matthew even Matthew is particularly popular in doing this yes in talking linking Emmanuel to himself and Jesus Bethlehem to, to, to Jesus yes. he often actually created a number of prophecies that I don't think were applicable no. at all to Jesus if you read the prophecies in their original context it makes a lot more sense and it seems to be nothing it's not messianic at all basically okay so I try my best to leave the Old Testament as yes. it is read the Old Testament and read it yourself, anybody, yeah. and see whether they come to the conclusion that the Old Te is the Old Testament all about Jesus. Were the sacrifices yeah. all pointing to Jesus? Did yeah. the Old Testament, as Paul says, yeah. introduce and bring out transgression? Yeah. I don't think any of that at okay. all. And I don't like reading the Old Testament through but just the eyes of God. in one thing to that, we've obviously concluded. I should, no, I'm just saying, but no, the Targum, <laughs> I did show that from what they believe is their classical sources. Yeah. But we've also, that, reference, we've also agreed that Targums yeah. are very late. Yeah, but then we would have well. to ask why would, a, even if it was a late, why would they inter, interpose the name Messiah into the text? It wouldn't make sense. It goes, because that those verses go, actually go against them. But, they do that all the time. Yeah. Those people all right. use that. Thanks for your time. Good anyway. talking to all you. Right, cool. all, right. all right. Um Yeah, quick wrap up so as we see um, I think the guy he's got a commentary on the Bible from an Islamic perspective he's um, doing his MA or whatever in Bible studies or whatever so obviously he's had some very interesting points and you know I had to try as best as I can to redress many of them but what we kind of see is people aren't actually taking a historical approach to the Bible they're not going from the beginning and understanding how did this concept of Jesus being this divine person, being um, this Jesus being a divine person, come into existence, because we see from the old, old, old Testament, the Bible is actually building up into this, and this is why, for example, he he wasn't looking at, into things as we should, because when I asked him about what Thomas said in Greek, he was comparing it to John, saying, "Well, well," but we can reference what Thomas said to what was said previously, especially in the Septuagint, because it translates the Old Testament into Greek, he couldn't answer that question. Why is it we have 135 instances of the term my Lord and my God used by a Jew and it's always referring to a deity? But then he's saying it's 
it's a shock term, but where there is no evidence of that. So therefore, we should go with what is consistent, not then try and inter ex you know interject our own meaning into something. Let's look at what the text is, and that's why when you have kind of a preconceived bias, then you're doing that. But clearly, we see the Old Testament starts to allude to this divine figure that is coming to earth, and that's why I asked when I asked him about the Book of Daniel, it's clearly a simile talking about one like the Son of Man descending into onto earth and he will receive the praises um, but it was a good conversation anyway you know always learning the things i'll kind of look into with that but clearly when we look at a historical approach we know that the earliest jews actually believed in a multiplicity within the godhead and it was not an invention from christianity and i'm actually also working on a presentation on this which hopefully be available next week or the week after so please if you enjoyed my um, presentation about the name Esai, it'll be something on the same levels, so it'll be one that is like really, really good watch. So, peace out. Thank you very much.